Hey guys, my name is Rohit and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day, because I'm not. I'll tell you why not, because the other day, well yesterday, today's Friday, so on Thursday, I had my driving theory test. Not the first one, the second one. And guess what? Your boy failed. So I'm not in a great mood. Mood. The vibe, the, there is no vibe, uh, bad vibe. And the coronavirus, there are two cases in the UK and they're in Birmingham, which is really, really close to where I live. Um, around, around half an hour away, because I'm in the West Midlands, so it's not, that's not great. And Brexit, Brexit means Brexit. The lads in Parliament are gonna sort that one out at 11 o'clock today, or is it midnight? I don't know. I, could, I honestly could not be bothered. I just want something to happen, all right? Uh, I'm lost for words. Uh, I, I don't even know where it's going. It's just not going anywhere. You know, and I'm, I've not heard back from any anywhere I've um, applied for my apprenticeships, you know, so that's not good either, you know, I'm, I'm breaking it right here, right? It's not good, is it? And did I forget to mention that Jake Paul actually won his boxing match against Anderson Gibb, and the rest of the UK missed the opportunity to see him on the canvas, knocked out with a bloody nose. Poor Anderson Gibb, <coughs> the poor man lost within one round. Oh well. He tried his best. And in other news, Katie Hopkins has been uh, portrayed as a racist. What a shock. Uh, the video is on Josh Peters' YouTube channel. Even better news, if you're, if you, you're, you're using Twitter, you probably already know, she has been, her account has been terminated. So, you know, maybe, maybe it's not a bad day after all, you know? Maybe it's not a bad day. Maybe, you know? Katie Hopkins off Twitter, she's been a racist. You know, a full video of her actually just tearing every minority apart oh no 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 i'll leave the link to that video in the description below if you want to watch it i watched i'm halfway through watching it and it's it's a banger of a video but anyway back to the point of the video uh, i'm going to be talking about advice for people who are in a levels or who are looking to go into sixth or more college in, in the uk make sure to watch this to the end because i've got i've got the best advice waiting for you at the end of the video, so stay tuned. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I'd really appreciate it if you did, because most of my viewers are not subscribed to me. So please do subscribe, leave a like. Uh, I, I might come across as a bit, you know, over the top, a bit cringy, a, a bit moody, a bit whatever, a bit out of the norm, maybe in the norm, whatever you might think, because I don't know what you think of me. But give me some time, bro, just, get, just, just subscribe, right? Just please. Do me a solid. Cheers. So my first tip is to make sure you've kept your class notes and your revision notes all organised. Um, I wish I was told this before I started year 12, because um, I had to start year 12, get a lot of folders, and I mean a lot. Make sure you keep your folders uh, also organised with dividers, and have folders for each subject or theme for each teacher for every subject. You might be asking, that's a lot. And you're not wrong, it is a lot, but it will honestly help you so much in organising. It will save you a lot of time, a lot of stress. And I'm going to be talking a lot about stress in this video because you're, you're going to be stressed, alright? A-levels is literally going to be so stressful if you're not organised anyway. So in my case, I'm doing, I'm doing three A-levels. So I'm doing maths, economics and business. Uh, i got to admit, my maths one uh, is not as organised as my folders for economics and business. I have eight folders across just the two subjects so maths like I, if i'm not interested in it you know but still i advise you to make sure you're organized for every subject and so basically if you're doing economics you might know there's gonna be four themes same for business but they're a bit different so i've got four themes i've also got two teachers but because i've got four themes i don't really need to worry about the teachers aspect so i've got four because each i'm <coughs> sorry I need to slow down because each theme is taught by different teachers. I've got two teachers, so I've got one teaching two and one teaching the other two. So that, that was really easy for me, I could do that. But for maths, they're kind of teaching here and there. They were supposed to do sets of uh, themes and like topics, but they weren't able to. So in maths you do stats, mechanics and pure. And because there's three uh, sub theme or topics and there's two teachers, you can't really split three, it, with two teachers and have like an even split so uh, my my folders for maths is a bit messed up but still pre-organized I'd say 
it is organised now anyway, not in year 12, but that's why do it in year 12 so you're sorted for year 13. I just realised my laptop is in view. Vice number two. In year 12, you might think homework is really easy, or the classwork or revision, you don't need to do it because the content is super easy, it's quite basic. Yeah, you're not wrong, it, it may be basic because that's what I felt, that's coming from my point of view. It was pretty basic and I didn't keep up to all the notes because I think, you know, I know it, I, I don't need to revise, or I just think, you know, I've done it in class, I already know the prior knowledge, I don't really need to do it. Most likely you will need to because in year 13 you do need those notes from year 12. Because when it comes to revision, if you've already made the notes in year 12, you don't need to waste time doing it in year 13. Because in year 13, you're going to be focused on UCAS, uh, trying to figure out where you want to go, university, apprenticeship, not going to either of those, maybe having a job, gap year, travelling. Boy, there's a lot to think about. And the last thing you want to uh, worry about is doing notes on things that you've already learned which you could have saved time if you did it in year 12. I'll give you a bit of insight to what year 12 is like. You'll have free time if you don't keep up with your notes. There's always something to do in year 12. I know you're gonna be uh, you're gonna be rattled by your teachers saying, oh do this, do that, you know, uh, work, start your CV in year 12 even though you're not applying to year 13. Uh, my advice, don't worry about your CV in year 12 because you're probably gonna do some other work during year 12. You might pick up another hobby, you might drop a hobby and you're probably gaining a skill that you don't have right now. So, I'll, take it with a grain of salt, leave your CV and your UCAS things like closer to year 13, maybe in summer holidays, but right now, stick to getting your academics out of the way. Stick to making your notes after every lesson, like even 10 minutes a day will save up hours near Christmas of next year in year 13. Honestly, it will help you. I'm really stressing about this point because in year 13, uh, I don't know if you know, but my maths class is behind about a month of where we should be. We're finishing our syllabus for maths around a one week before our actual exam starts. So we have one week of revision in class. And for to make that up, we also were set like so much homework and revision over the Christmas holidays. And prior to that, I literally broke down at least twice. I'm not even kidding. I was literally crying. I don't like to admit it, but I was, and it was stressful. I was set eight tests, so that's eight hours, and if you're bad at them, which I was, you might as well double that, so that's six, no, that wasn't even 18, that was only for pure, there was um, stats as well. So there were 16 tests, I, even, I forgot, I six, so that's 16 hours, plus four hours, because you're trying to figure out, as teachers, how to do that, that's 20 hours of work for just one subject, not including the current homework you're doing for the current topics you're studying. Because all that 16 hours of tests were for year 12 stuff because I didn't do good, I didn't do too good for that exam at the end of year 12. So I set that to make sure I know what I'm doing. So 16 hours there, make it 20 because I'm, you know, I wouldn't be doing it if I was good at them. Because I'm not good at them, I'm doing them. So it's going to take me more longer to do them. So that's 20 hours. Homework I'm doing right now, let's say uh, an hour of homework every lesson I'm set. I have uh, five lessons, let's say on average, per per week of maths, that's five hours. 25, 25 hours set in one week. <sighs> and I was expected to go, <laughs> I'm sorry, this is stressful. Sorry if I'm rambling so much, but I was set, told to even go after school on a Friday to catch up and to do extra work. Well, not really extra, it was to help with other work. And, you know, it did help. I did go from a U to a C in my next test, so that's really good. But don't put yourself in that position, because you could have just avoided it if you did the revision, made the revision notes, or made good class notes. That's also another thing. Make good class notes whilst you're in class, because it's really easy. You don't know whilst you're doing the work, because after, you know, oh, I'll highlight it after, I'll use that colour after. If you do it in class, you get it open door with and you got the rest of the week or the, the weekend to yourself it could be mind maps it could be cue cards it could be like just writing notes down it could be whatever you want to do whatever you think is best for you just start doing it so when it comes closer to exams in year 12 and the exams in year 13 you don't have to stress about actually making them so you can advise from them and that leads me to my next point 
I did say leave your UCAS stuff to year 13. I still would say to stick to that because you, you have a better idea in year 13. But I would say start to think about what you want to do after A levels in year 12. So, uh, so there's a lot of options you can do after A levels. As I've also mentioned, I've said apprenticeships. So that's what I'm looking to do because that's what I feel like is a good option for me. You know, you get a qualification and get a few years of experience, valuable experience as well, which companies are looking for. Less companies are asking for uh, degrees, by the way, like Google, they don't require a degree. I think Goldman Sachs are the same, Facebook is similar, and Microsoft. I think, I know of those three or four. Uh, obviously, university degree is still a good option. Getting a job, getting real life skills, depending on what, what you want to do. If you want to do engineering, that's a, that's a route, or you want to do a engineering in an apprenticeship, that's also a good option. Or you can take a gap year if you uh, literally have no idea or if you want to go traveling or you want to you know do a social activity to help people before you start university or or you just want to earn some money before you go uni or have a job a gap year is really good i have i think i have two mates who are going on gap years one is working and one is traveling the world so honestly there's endless limits to what you want to do after a levels so think about it talk to your parents talk to your career advisor if you do want to have a school or your teachers they they've you know they've gone through this they've helped multiple students before and they probably have uh, deal with students who are in a similar position with you and they know from experience what you might enjoy so there's no harm in talking to them you know chatting for 10 minutes and then deciding on your own but make sure you do what you want to do I do agree with listening to other people's advice but make sure you are the one who makes a judgment not and don't go on someone else's will all right for, my, for example, my parents really wanted me to go to university. It took me, I kid you not, it took me at least a year, ha well not hammering, but you know, drip feeding them why I don't want to go to university. And then when it came to like end of year 12, I literally just sat down with them and told mom, I know you're Indian, dad, I know you're Indian as well, and you want me to go to university, because every Indian kid goes to university. I'm just not fitted, for that environment you know I've learned through recent years of education that I'm just not good enough and it's time I do something about it and it's time I do an apprenticeship and continue my and start my career and continue my education and learning through a different way what's the word I don't know you just need to take control of your life you know you're turning 17 18 you're becoming adults I became an adult this month I don't even know how like, I don't feel 18 but you need to take control of your life and start making judgments. Don't make the mistake of my mate who wants to go to media but took physics for an A-level, all right? Don't do that. And my last point is you're, you're gonna have free periods when you're in college. If you are in year 12 and 13, you of course know you have free periods. Don't waste all of them. You know, I know you're gonna waste some of them. You know, that's a given. You know, I did, everyone has wasted at least 50%. You know, let's just say that, you know? But don't waste all of them, you know? A free period is a free hour out of school, out of your time, to work on something that you really need to work on. It can be something you want to do in your career. You want to, it could be something you want to catch up in class. Just make sure you've caught up with everything you've done in class. Because you might, as I've said, you might think year 12 is a breeze. Because it might be, depending on your subject, it honestly might be. But you don't want to let that catch up uh, catch up to you in year 13. Because let me tell you, it's going to bite you in the butt. And you don't want that to happen. Honestly, no one wants biting in the butt, you know. Unless you're into that kinky stuff, so... Oh, biting your butt? What am I on about? What are you on about, mate? Shut up. And my light just died. Way. You know what? Screw it. We're just going to do it without the light. Um, I hope you can see me well. Um, you know what? You can turn the other light. One sec. You know what? Hopefully that. You know what? I'm gonna leave this here. It gives me a bit of light. Sit back a bit so you can see me properly. Um, you know, I, I'm already dark as it is. You know, I, I, I want you to see me. You know. Anyway, what was the point? I would suggest you do it for revision, honestly, if that's uh, my thing. But if you're doing what I did, I did digital. Well, I did nothing, but. If I did what I was supposed to do, I'd probably do digital marketing and start that. 
uh, doing like a free period because I had to literally spend it at home every day. I probably did an hour or two learning about digital marketing to to know what I know now. I, I won't say I know I'm a I'm a know it all about digital marketing, but I now have a solid understanding about it, and I have a good foundation to grow on it. So if you have a skill that you want to learn, like I don't know, it could be you want to become a footballer because there's a classmate, uh, there's a student at our sixth form. She's a professional footballer. She she plays for under 18s England football team and for Aston Villa. So if you want to do that, do that. Well, you can't really do it in the future, but you know what I mean. Work on a skill that you really want to do in the future and it will help your career. For me, it was digital marketing. For you, it may be acting. Go through. Uh, examples of actors and their acting uh, methods or read scripts or if you want to do engineering look up how to do engineering look at university options because that, that's also a thing that I actually did well, in my free periods I looked at what I want to do first I want to go to university so I researched that in my free periods I found out I didn't want to do that I went to Warwick didn't like it looked at apprenticeships amazing you can do that. Or you want to do revision, catch up on notes, make sure you got your revision, get that A sorted. Point is, don't waste all of them, all right? You got an opportunity to do some work, your independent study, you might as well take the advantage and do that. And essentially, in year 12, you're just preparing for year 13. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice now because I've been <laughs> shouting at the camera, but <clears throat> I hope you got my point. I hope my, me losing my voice was worth it. My last piece of advice, if you haven't tuned out, I hope you're still tuning in. In the real world, no one really cares what you get in your A-levels. So if you do mess up your A-levels, and you mess up your two years in A-levels, sixth form college, whatever you're doing, do not worry. Do not let your first 18 years of your life determine the rest of your 80 years. If you do waste your time on A-levels, you're fine, really. So if you don't want to take up any of my advice that I gave given to you today, I don't blame you, because I wouldn't have took it either. Wrap it up. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening to me rambling on. I hope you've learned something. Well, you know something. If you're going to implement it, let me know. And if you do have more advice or tips for other people who are in year 12 and you're year 13, you're going to uni, you are in uni, or you're starting to go into year 12, let me know what you think about this video. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video, and make sure you're subscribed. See ya.